What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. Today I'm bringing you this modern wall art. Been in the shop with Brad from Fix This Build That this week. We've been working together on a couple projects. Brad, what have you been working on? Yeah, man, we made this awesome 49 layer bent lamination charcuterie board. First time doing bent lamination for both Johnny and I. It was kind of fun to figure out how to do it. If you want to check out the build, it's over on my channel. Yeah, and I'll also have a link to that in the video description and in the end screen at the end of this video. Uh, but as I said, I built this really simple wall art just using scrap wood. This is walnut and maple on a uh, scrap of plywood for the backing. Super happy with the way it came out. So let's go ahead and get started with the build. I built this project out of some rough hard maple and walnut offcuts that I've been hanging on to. So my first step was milling up these pieces to get two flat faces and one square edge. If you'd like to build this and you don't have a bunch of scraps hanging around, you could always just buy one by twos or one by fours from your local home center. And if you can't find walnut in your area, you could always just stain half of the strips to get a similar look. So my hard maple pieces were much thicker than I needed, so I started by ripping them into strips roughly equivalent to one by twos. After ripping the hard maple pieces, I started planing all of my pieces, both the walnut and maple, down to the same thickness. And this thickness will actually be the width of the strips on the final piece of art, so it's important that they're all the same size so that the strips line up. So my pieces were roughly three quarters of an inch thick after milling. So the last step before ripping the strips to final size was squaring up one edge on the jointer, and this just gave me a good reference edge for the table saw. So next I started ripping the pieces into strips on the table saw, and I started by ripping the hard maple pieces in half, roughly 5 eighths of an inch wide. And so the width that you rip these strips to at this step will be the depth of the strips on the final piece, since these pieces will be rotated 90 degrees before being fastened to the plywood backer board. So after ripping about half of the strips at that 5 eighths inch width, I moved the fence over about a quarter of an inch. The strips on the final art piece have a staggered depth, and this really gives the piece a lot more visual appeal. So next I needed to get the plywood backing cut to size, and I just used a scrap piece of 3 quarter inch plywood. So first I cut the piece square, leaving it slightly oversized, and after cutting it square, I tilted the blade to 45 degrees and cut a 45 degree bevel on all four edges of the board. And adding this 45 degree bevel helps to keep the plywood edges from showing if you look at the final piece from the sides. So while I was working on the plywood, my buddy Grant Batson, who you might remember from the Walnut Barstool video, who was also hanging out with Brad and I in the shop, cut a square end on each of the strips. So the strips need to meet up cleanly in the middle of the piece, so each piece needs to have at least one square end. So with the strips at their final size, I could finally start laying them out. So I started by just placing them on the plywood to get a rough idea of where I wanted everything. And once I was happy with the arrangement, I started securing each strip using a few pin nails using the Aero PT23G pin nailer. So Aero Fastener is one of the sponsors of this week's video, and they make a wide variety of fastening tools including staple guns, nailers, glue guns, riveters, and much more. So I have a ton of projects featuring Aero tools coming up, so stay tuned for that. And if you'd like to learn more about Aero Fastener, check out the link in the video description below. With all the strips in place, I gave them a quick sanding and then applied a few coats of Waterlox, another one of this week's sponsors. So Waterlox is a blend of tongue oil and resins and creates a really tough water resistant finish that is also absolutely beautiful. The tongue oil penetrates into the wood while the resins remain elastic and this combination holds up to wear extremely well. So to learn more about Waterlox, check out the link in the video description below. Once I got back home from Brad's shop, it was time to hang the piece. So it ended up being pretty dang heavy with all the plywood and hardwoods, so a normal picture hanging wire wasn't really going to cut it. And so I found this metal hanging bracket, it's essentially a metal French cleat at my local home center. And I'll have a link to the exact item I used in the video description. And this worked out perfectly, it's rated for something like 200 pounds, so it had no problem supporting this piece of art and installation was really easy. First I installed one of the brackets on the back of the art and then installed the corresponding bracket on the wall and the two brackets just hooked together just like a French cleat and once the art was hung, the project was done. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. Again, this was a nice, simple project, but a great way to use up scrap wood, and I think will be a real kind of focal point in my den. I'm gonna hang this above my couch. It's gonna look awesome. So 
Again, been working with Brad this week. Uh, definitely go check out his channel. I'll have a link to his video here at the end. Also, I have a link to all the tools and products I use in the video description below. Also, if you don't already, go ahead and get subscribed. I put out new project videos like this every Tuesday. And last, I wanna say a big thanks to my Patreons. Thank you guys so much for supporting me over there. I'll have a link to that if you wanna check me out there. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, happy building.